Lisandro Martinez total agreement today in there for you a meeting has been scheduled in between Manchester United and Ajax in there for you we are talking Frankie De Jong we are talking Axel Twanzebe we are talking Will Fish and the new kit of United that is the away kit that's going to be launched on Saturday down in Melbourne Australia welcome to this channel which goes by names of United Matters channel guys smash the like button comment and share I'm really amazed I'm really amazed and blown away with how you guys are really showing me love to this channel thank you guys thank you show me love again by really subscribing to this channel if at all you're watching us for the very first time and never to subscribe guys subscribe and after subscribing hit the notification bell that will enable you get notified each and every time i upload a video to this channel in there for you yesterday united won the century Bangkok cup in there for you after beating liverpool four nil on the score sheet was sancho fred marcial and pelestri but the highlights were eric bay um the two the two young lads that really played in the midfield that is Zidane Iqba and a man a boy who goes better Charlie Savage a child who Robbie Savage in there for you so we really loved that game and people are still reminiscing about it and they're really drawing lots of expectations about the Ten Hag ball how he really passes from the back the ball distribution of David De Gea being a super goalkeeper and for that being a super goalkeeper Rafael Veran has really come out and really hailed hailed held David Hay and said he was under the commandments or the orders of Eric Ten Hag. He told him, that's what I want. That's what I want you to do. You get? So, United is up and running in there for you. And I know we are really jetting to Melbourne, Australia. And I'll speak now they are on the plane. And I know in the next four hours, they will be down in australia and they they'll train by the way in the night according to me they might train because when they reach they're really going to go to the hotel and rest after resting they really go in and train because on friday we are playing melbourne down there in australia in there for you so thank you very much guys for joining me in the you let's get into the stories of the day lisandro martinez united are really closing in on a deal on lisandro martinez charles Schwartz of arsenal remember he's an arsenal correspondent for goal why am i Really bring you this tweet of of an Arsenal correspondent for go remember United was neck to neck with Arsenal as far as the signing of Lisandro Martinez was concerned and now Arsenal look like a pulled up the race and this person who really reports for Arsenal who is being fed in by the club has something to tell us in there for he said United have moved ahead of Arsenal in the race of Lisandro Martinez United are the club actively pushing to find an agreement with Ajax after Arsenal cooled their interest in there for you? So Arsenal cooled their interest in this deal and it's now a solo run and United are really enjoying this and they really want to go ahead and get this deal done. Because if I told you saw so the game yesterday, we are short of defenders. Three defenders are expected to leave Manchester United. Eric Bay, I mean, it seemed playing well last night or yesterday. Twan Zebe is expected to leave. He was not part of the team. He has even flown back to Manchester. I'm really going to give you the reason as to why. And there is a team that is interested in him. Then Phil Jones also expected to leave. So that means we're going to be left with Rafael Veran, Harry Maguire, and Victor Lindorov. Meaning that we need a fourth center back in the names of Lisandro Martinez. And is so much pivotal in the way Ten Hag really wants to play, especially building that ball from behind in there so charles once we're here to tell us that after holding firm after holding firm for weeks it is now believed ajax are willing to find an agreement with manchester united for lisandro martinez this is because the player is telling them i want to go i want to go united should be my next destination they want me they really made your realistic your realistic valuation for me and you guys said no why i want to go to the premier league and i did a story yesterday night that Ajax is preparing for the post Lisandro Martinez days. They've gone to Shakhtar Donetsk. There is a left back. There is there is there is a left-footed center back of Shakhtar Donetsk who goes by names of Miyako. There <laughs> for you. They've really started talking with him to really convince him to come and play for them. So Class Jan Huntler has met with his agent, and I know by today the deal is going to be done. And we expect that to happen in there for you. So we are having Sim Melo. He's telling us that United are expected to make a new offer for Lisandro Martinez in the coming days in there for you. So let's wait and see how that goes in there for you. Now, the big one is here. 
Man United will meet with Ajax on Wednesday, which is today, to discuss Lisandro Martinez' deal. Negotiations now entering into key stages. Last proposal was turned down by Ajax, but was turned down, but Ajax are finally open to sell Lisandro Martinez at their conditions. Player pushing as he wants to play Premier League football. That is the transfer guru Fabrizio Romano. So, this tweet was put out yesterday night. I said I shouldn't do that story. Yesterday night, I should come in here and be related to you live on to this morning when most of you are really awake because when i really come out in the night and really do these lives it's like i'm really betraying those that are sleeping so i said let me do this in there for you i mean these people being in different parts of the world i will believe that at this kind of the day most of the people are at least awake and really ready to know what is the breaking news about manchester united and its players in there for you so fabricio romano told us that ajax has finally agreed to hold negotiations with Manchester United. Obviously, when you hear that the negotiations have been agreed to take place, obviously the deal is set off. That's why I've told you that Lisandro agreement today. You get? Total agreement is going to take place today because it can't really take an hour or three hours because what they're going to negotiate about is give us some time. We want to really negotiate a deal for this left back to come in. Sorry, for this left defender to come in through. Then... You go do your medical stuff, 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 stuff. Then you'll have the player. That's what they're going to discuss about. And I know United is going to negotiate down that price. United can't pay 52 million pounds for Lisandro Martinez. I doubt. I doubt. I doubt. A player who initially costed 30 million euros. And United has added more 20, 20 million euros. And Ajax are still trying to negotiate. And really play safe on their side. No, I think negotiating them down... And United really has a very good relationship with Ajax. And you know, Ajax will dance with the tunes of Manchester United this time around because United stretched out to the realistic valuation of Ajax for Martinez in there for you. So the meeting is going to take place today. And I think in the next two, three hours, Fabricio will be coming in here to let, to let us know about what has happened or transpired from the deal. And we will be here to let you know what is going to happen for Lisandro Martinez to Manchester United. Then Mark Voyage, who works for Telesport and Telegraph in the Netherlands, very close source from Ajax, has said Lisandro Martinez has set his sights on a move to the Premier League. Ajax is looking for replacement. Obviously, I've told you about that left-footed centre-back from Shakhtar Donetsk is what they're really looking at. So it looks like Ajax have finally agreed that we have to sell this player. And I told you last night that Ajax is a selling team. Ajax can sell its first. Ajax can sell its entire first starting eleven. They can. They're a selling team. The only way they cannot sell a player is when you don't meet the realistic evaluation or the realistic, the realistic valuation of their player. If at all you meet it, obviously they give you the player. You get. So. This is what is happening for United in there for you on the Lisandro Martinez deal. Obviously, Mark Vawage coming in here to confirm this. Then, we are having Mark Vawage via European Lad saying that Ajax are counting on the departure of Lisandro Martinez. At least, Man United's latest offer, 45 million euros plus 5 million euros bonuses, is nearing the minimum price that Ajax demands. 55 million euros guaranteed and United is willing to place another higher bid. In there for you so as things stand United is 10 million euros less 10 million euros less so we wait to see no it's five five million euros less so Ajax wants United to add in more five million euros such that they give them five they give them 50 million euros up front then five million euros as bonuses obviously that is going to be done because in the state where we are we need a defender we need a defender like Martinez. We need him immediately. Like yesterday, I told you when I was really doing the match reaction, they really did it late. After United beat Liverpool for Neil, I told you, look at the situation we are into yesterday. We were short of centre-backs. Harry Maguire had really some problems. He couldn't really play. Twanzebe flew back to Manchester. Those two were off. So, in the first half, we played with Linderoff and, um, and uh, Rafael Varane. In the central defense in the second half we had to play with we have to we had to play with tellers in the left in the central defense yet he's not a central defender he's a left back you get he struggled a lot into that position because it's not where he plays regularly you get eric bay was 
at least supposed to play with Harry Maguire or Twanza Bay, but none of those was present. And look, we are having a Harry Maguire. Ever since we got that injury in the game when we are playing, we are playing which team? Was it Fulham? I think we are playing Fulham. The season was like four or five games to its end in that season of 2020, season of 2020, 2021, when United finished second. It was like coming to an end and he really got an injury. Ever since then, Maguire has really gone ahead to register more injuries. So yesterday he didn't play. I think he has an injury in there for you. And now that means we've added another injury prone defender to Rafael Veran because we're not sure of Rafael Veran. Last season he played 27 games out of the close of 50 games we played. He missed out on close to 23 games. So that means that you have to bring in a defender who really fits the philosophy of the manager and is not injury prone. Who is that defender? It's Lisandro Martinez. Because even Eric Bay, the reason is why I think his selling is going to be so much easy. Reason is he's injury prone. I mean, it's his nice display yesterday. He's injury prone. He's injury prone. So 100% believe that this deal is going to happen today. Today, I expect here we go from Fabrizio Romano on Lisandro Martinez. United really needs this deal to get done. As they are down in Barcelona, negotiating for Frankie de Jong and convincing him to come to Manchester United, this deal needs to get done. These are simple deals that shouldn't even last hours in there for you at United in there for you. So to me, I really believe that a deal is really going to happen in there for you. So this is another story brought out by Telegraph. That's the James Daka of the Telegraph. And it's really shocking about the defenders still. Let's continue with why we need Lisandro Martinez in there for you. They've said United have decided to fly a 19-year-old Will Fish out to Melbourne for the second leg of the tour as cover in the position so Teles does not have to play as a makeshift center half again. It was outrageous. It was uncalled for. It was surprising that a team that went close to how many defenders? We had five central defenders. We reached an extent in the second half when we had taken off Rafael Varane and Linderov on fielding two central defenders we only had one in the names of Eric Bay and he tells us how to go in and play that side very much annoying so United has gone ahead to, feel, to fly in a 19 year old Will Fish from the academy to join them in Melbourne because the situation is not really good the manager doesn't want really to play to play to, he doesn't want to make his players to play very many minutes in there for you he believes that for these starting games, we should play like 45 games. Then in that game, then in those two games that you're going to play at Old Trafford, that is against Atletico Madrid and Ray Volcano, then we should come in and see these players play at least with 75, 60 minutes in there for you. That's what the manager is all about. So all these are reasons showing you that we are having shortage in the central defense area. We need a central defense. And I will be, we need a central defender, and I will believe that he really made this calculation very much well in there for you. Now, this is a situation that really led to what we are having right now. Twanzebe has left the tour to deal with a small personal issue. Samuel Lucas in there for you. Samuel Lucas, this time around, I will believe that. Who is briefing him from the club? Because it looks like he's hitting lots of misses. He's hitting lots of misses in there for you. Let me show you why he's hitting a miss in there for you. After him saying that, he has left the tour to deal with a small problem. Guess what? We are having Daniel Longo in there for you. He says, Bournemouth have turned their attention to Manchester United's Axel Twanzebe after Tottenham's Java Tanganga turned them down. There you go. Mr. Samuel Lucas. It looks like Twanzebe was fit, but United got... A call from the agent telling them that I found a suitable suitor for Axel Transebe. And guess what? When a suitor comes in through, what goes ahead to happen is simple. The player cannot take part into these games we are playing. Due to the reason that you are risking him. If he gets an injury, then the deal is off. So what United did was tell him, fly back to Manchester. You get, after flying back to Manchester... Go with your agent, discuss your deal, and we sell you off because you are not part of the Ten Hag plan. That's it. So, I think, Samuel Lucas, you have been again 
told lies. Before this game of Liverpool, Samuel Lucas came out and told us that Eric Ten Hag sees Freddie, um, Scott McTominay, Danny Van Bink, and uh, James Garner as central midfielders. Guess what? Scott McTominay played as a box-to-box -box midfielder yesterday in the first half. Fred was the sitting midfielder. In the second half, I waited to see how they are going to play Danny Van Bink as a defensive midfielder, and it never happened. He was played in front of the double pivot of Savage and Zidane Akbar. You get? That was another information that really came in through from Samuel Lucas, and it hit the wall. And it has gone ahead to tell us that he has a personal issue, but they are telling us that Bournemouth have turned their attention to Axel Twanzebe. They want him to sign for them to come in and play their central defense because they are in the, cha in the Premier League. So that's what we have at Manchester United and Samuel Lucas has hit the wall again. And it looks like Axel Twanzebe is on the move away from Manchester United because he can't impress the manager. The manager is bringing in a player or a central defender who is close to 50 million euros and there is no way you can bench a player who is worth 50 million euros at Manchester United. So the manager believes that Martinez is really is really is really integral for his squad and come what may he's really going to make it to the level that he expects him to do in the and he's coming here to start. He's coming here to start. Then then we go to official United will launch their new 22 slash 23 away kit on Saturday, 16th in Melbourne. In there for you. Let me check in there for you. United fixtures. Wow, one. Where are you? <coughs> Sorry about that. United is playing. Is playing. Yeah, in Melbourne it will be 16th, but here it will be 15th. So when United is playing Melbourne, they are really going to get dressed into that away kit, and they are launching it on 22nd slash. 23rd in there for you. So yesterday they looked so great into that red jersey. Now wait to see what that away kit is all about. Is it all about the collar? What is it all about? Because the home kit was all about the collar. Now let's wait and see that away kit. What is it all about? I sent for my jerseys. They've not yet arrived in there for you. And I'm waiting them to come in here such that I really get done into one immediately in here for you because it sounds good in there for you. Now let's get into the Frankie De Jong story. Victor Nahe in there for you has come out and told us that several Barcelona signings and departures will be made official in the next few hours. Obviously, the signings that we expect to be made official in the next hours, that is Rafinha. He's undergoing his medical. A bid was submitted. 58 million euros accepted by Leeds plus, I think, 5 million add-ons in there for you. Expect him to be announced by Barcelona. Then Lewandowski, because a bid has been made, of 40 to 50 million pound million euros in there for you that is another one expect to be made in there for you departures the jong might be part of the departures by the way because the united ceo and technical director are in barcelona until friday they want to see this deal done they want to see this deal getting done immediately but i mean it's everything that is happening in there for you frankie de jong has told barcelona that he doesn't feel responsible for Barcelona's economic struggles and that's why he does not want to reduce his salary in order to stay in there for you. That is Edu Polo in there for you. So why is he saying that he doesn't want to go ahead to do a pay cut on his salary in there for you? I mean, it's everything that happened during the pandemic. He took a pay cut and they promised him that we will pay you that money. Right now, Barcelona owes Frankie de Jong 17 million euros and they have not yet paid, they've not yet paid that money back and they are telling him again to go ahead and take a pay cut. He's saying, no, I'm not responsible for your struggles in your economy. Get me out of that. I want my money and I won't really take a pay cut. Everything being done by de Jong really shows that they are going to part ways with Barcelona in there for you because... They're here to make money. I don't know whether a player would go ahead and say, all right, let me sacrifice myself for Barcelona and then stay here and then stay here for another season and see whether things are really going to go on well. Remember, this started way back in 2020. You get now, it's two years now. We are going to the third year. Barcelona has not yet revived its economy. So Frank de Jong is telling them, 
two years down the road, you've not yet revived your economy back to where you're supposed to be. How am I sure that if at all I go ahead and take a pay cut for the third year, you guys will go ahead and pay me? What, what yardstick, what security do you show me or do you give me that you guys are really going to stabilize as a team? So there is a very big misunderstanding between De Jong, his agent, and Barcelona onto the pay cut in there for you. But Fabricio has told us this on the deal of him coming to Manchester United. It is really so much hurting according to me. He says, De Jong's agent, Ali Dusan and her son, Setinkaya, have informed Barcelona that Frank De Jong has still no intention to leave. Also, also that Frankie and his agents are not accepting any salary reduction, all talks related to that. Man United are informed, are also informed, deal now stalling for you. So, the deal of Frankie De Jong has stalled at that moment. But I'm asking myself, who is really letting up this information? One, when you look at Frankie De Jong, Barcelona have come out clear. They've set it out in black and white. If Frankie De Jong is to stay, he has to take a pay cut. Frankie De Jong is telling them, I'm not taking a pay cut. So, do you think he's going to stay at Barcelona or is he leaving? The situation Frankie De Jong is causing at Barcelona shows that they should part ways. Barcelona is not willing to go ahead and pay 300 and fifty thousand pounds a week for Frankie De Jong because that's the amount of money he earns per week. Those are his weekly wages. They are immense. So what Barcelona is saying, we want to sell you off. If you want to stay, take a pay cut. His agents, his agents are, are selling, are, are telling him, don't accept a pay cut in the face. So I see this as a contradiction if not as a situation that is leading to the departure of Frankie de Jong. If Frankie de Jong tells Barcelona that I don't want to go, I want to stay here, but you are not really taking a pay cut of my salary, it's like another way of telling him that, please, it's another way of telling Barcelona that, please, sell me off because I have a team that can really get me that money. So it looks like a contradiction. I say contradiction here for you because Barcelona is telling you if you are staying, you need to take a pay cut. Then you are telling them, I cannot take a pay cut. You are disagreeing with them. That means you are parallel and you never meet. Obviously, that equates to the selling of Frankie de Jong. And who are there to stake him? It's United. So, does de Jong think that he's really so much strong? than the club of Barcelona to go head to head with it because it looks like they are now head to head. They are crashing right now. Barcelona is moving out something hard and I think the administration of Barcelona came up with the situation on De Jong knowing that it's the only thing that he won't accept and the only thing that will lead to him being sold out of Barcelona. That's it. The situation is going to put him out. Baka will tell him, if you're not taking a pay cut, get out. Obviously, he won't accept because he demands them 17 million euros. That money has not been paid to him. They will tell him that if at all you want to get your money paid, we have to sell you, get that money out of the 50, out of the 50, out of the 65 million euros that United is getting us. We'll get the 17, we pay you, then you leave. That's the only way we can get you your money. But if at all, you want us to pay your money right now? We don't have it. And if at all you want to stay here, take a pay cut. De Jong can't be Jesus. He's not, he's not the one who started Barcelona. Can he be that lenient to Barcelona? Because these agents are also money-minded. They're here to make money. So they'll weigh in these options. United is getting us £350,000 a week. Plus a sign-on fee. Plus agent fees. Barcelona is telling my client to go ahead and wait for the 17 million euros, the alias they have, then to even take a pay cut. So, they'll say, this is not realistic and it's not business. Let's go to where we feel that you are needed. Because in the situation, Barcelona is showing De Jong that we no longer need you. If Barcelona needed De Jong, they wouldn't have gone into 
bring in Rafinha and spend all that amount of money. 58 million euros. Where have they gotten it from? If they loved him a lot, before they went in for Rafinha, they would have settled his previous debt and gave him 17 million euros. But they've gone ahead to cough out 58 million euros to bring in a man who goes by the names of Rafinha and decide which goes by the names of Barcelona. They've gone ahead to bring in Lewandowski. A bid of 50 million euros has been made to Bayern Munich and he's coming. De Jong is demanding his money. When you add all those situations and dots, do you think he's needed? I believe he's not needed. I decide which goes by the names of Barcelona. To me, I see a lot of hope in this situation. However much they are saying that deal is telling, but they're not going to reach an agreement. Barcelona have already made their mind. They're going to sell De Jong. Reason being, Xavi, ideal midfield three is Busquets, Pedri, and Bernardo Silva. You get? That's what they want. That's what they want. So, after all that, Frank De Jong will get to know that he's no longer liked at Barcelona. They've brought in Frank Kessi. They have Gavi. <laughs> that means for every position in the midfield, they have some other two players. They have some more three players who can replace these ones. Nicole can come in and play that role of Busquets. Kasi, Frank Kessi can play it. Um, so that means they're having replacements in there for you. For Pedri, they're having Gavi. You get? So, Barcelona looks all set to offload De Jong. De Jong doesn't want to go. Barcelona is telling him, we are going to sell you off because you're not taking a pay cut. The situation has been set. Is it a trap for Frankie De Jong? I don't know in there for you, but all I'm saying is that Frankie De Jong is going to be sold according to me however much fabricio is saying the deal has told to me we believe that the deal is not selling because the departures of barcelona are said to be announced this week in there for you and the new signings in there for you because they are running short of time when you look at the league i think they're also beginning let me look at the barcelona fixtures in there for you barcelona fixtures <coughs> they're running short of time I know they're also starting in July. Their season is starting off in July. That is the La Liga. 24th July, they are playing Real Madrid. They are playing Juventus. <laughs> they're for you. All right. Then John Gamba Cup on the 7th of July. Roy Volcano, 13th August, in there for you. So, their season. Let me check out La Liga fixtures. La Liga. Let me check the La Liga fixtures. When is La Liga resuming? Get me the fixtures, guys. Fixtures. It's what I want. All right. 12. That means Barcelona is playing on the 13th. So Barcelona is playing his first game in the La Liga on the 13th. That means they want to let Xavi have a great time with his squad. 23rd. That means they are having close to today's 13th, 18 days. They're having close to 41 days to prepare for their season. So, Xavi believes that he needs the young, but the situation at Barcelona won't really help him stay in there for you. But I'm asking myself, then, why have they been telling us that Xavi convinced Frankie de Jong to leave and Eric Ten Hag told him that this is the best place you're supposed to come. You're really going to be the face of this project. So, these things are so much confusing, but I leave them to you. I've explained to you everything from Lisandro Martinez total agreement today meeting scheduled your reaction to that is welcome Axel Twanzebe leaving the tour he's being linked to Bournemouth on a move to Bournemouth in there for you so we wait and see what has happened there for you Frankie De Jong deal sterling but all in all we know that it's really going to happen and going to go the right way we want it in there for you in here onto this channel which goes by the names of united matters channel so guys thank you for watching in i go by the names of rock and david smash the like button comment and share feel free to let me know your real views about these deals that united are really chasing on to go ahead and accomplish and lastly the official away kit is going to be launched on saturday that is 16th in there in melbourne see you tomorrow guys not tomorrow not tomorrow 
see you in the next video i think in the next three hours we are coming i'm trying to schedule up the time such that you guys know that every time i upload videos or i go live but i think i'm coming back with a live video of united and maybe the breaking news of lisandro Martinez because i'm 100 percent optimistic something positive is coming out today because the plate of the plate of eric ten hag is lacking some good food on it and united are really trying to really make the buffet look nice and the buffet is the jong lisandro martinez ericsson and a central defensive midfielder plus anthony that's what eric ten hag wants to look at his plate that's what he really wants to serve us on the 7th of august at old trafford as we take on brighton i'm out